What's going on guys? Army Fire Dog is back again. How have y'all been? Today I actually have a review time for you of the RHA's flagship CL2. This is their wired and wireless, depending on which world you want to go with, IEM. Uh, I've had a very fantastic week with it and it's uh, $900 price point is actually very respectable considering all the, not just not really features, but quality that comes with this product. Now of course dive into that in the course of this review. But of course, like always, I like to start with the construction of which, and then I'll work my way down from there. So the construction of the RHA CL2 is very, very nice. This is actually injection molded ceramic. So it feels very similar to like the Bear Dynamic Zalento or T8 IEMK2 I reviewed previously. Except for unlike them, which is a very high quality plastic, this is actually true ceramic as even the website themselves say. It is injection molded ceramic. So very, very nice. It feels very premium and it feels lightweight in your ears. So despite having nice weight in your hands, in your ears does a great job of actually disappearing in itself. The IEM itself, as you can see, is of the Concha style. This is the style I personally prefer. I think it is, in my opinion, the most comfortable of all the styles. This is as comfortable as I've been able to find without going to a full like custom IEM. The horn of which is the standard horn size, but it does have a really cool pattern right there. It's a really cool and I don't think it does much for the sound, but it does just, it looks nice. It's a nice touch for the aesthetic side of it. Moving on down to the cable itself, and as you've seen, the cable is detachable. Thank you, RHA. But, going back on, the cable, uses very nice memory wire all the way through here is actually cooled memory wire so you can adjust it to your ear size or ear shape and it will stay like that that is a very very nice touch this is actually some of the best memory wire i've actually seen on any product that's offered memory wire now unfortunately for this review i was unable to test the balanced cable i was unable to find what i did with my dap that has a balanced capabilities no idea what to do with it. It's somewhere in these moving boxes that I've yet to get to. So, but for all intents and purposes, the quality should be close enough to same. The wireless headband is just a basic um, thick rubber that is very uh, flexible and very, very lightweight. All of your controls are on the right side, the right cable. The power button is right here. You hold it down for about three seconds to turn on, and then an additional two seconds will enter it into a pairing mode. Once it is on and paired to a device, if you simply click it one time, it will actively tell you the battery level. That's actually a feature that I've really enjoyed. Now, to disclaim, I have not personally had to charge this. Now, I also haven't really listened to it too much, more than like a day or so. I've mainly done wired listening. But anywho. Continuing on, your actual controls is slightly down right here on the cable. As an RHA branded there, which is really nice. Now, the middle button is your play, pause, answer, hang up. Single tap forward increases your volume forward towards the uh, earphone. If it's, it'll actually be up if it's on your ear. Single tap back will go down in volume. Holding will go to the next track and vice versa for previous track. And then going towards the end, you have, like on the wired cable, the MMCX adapter. So my overall thoughts on the construction of the RHA CL2 is very, very top notch. It is very reminiscent of the price point, the $900 price point that is, is asking. I do like seeing it, and I think RHA has done a truly fantastic job in providing quality, comfort, which I'll touch on here very next in the next section, and um, craftsmanship. Now, moving on to the comfort. As I mentioned earlier, the RHA CL2s are the Concha style, and by Concha, it's the reminiscent of this right here. This is called the Concha, but this style just fits as good as a non-custom IEM can. It just perfectly fits right in here, even with my larger ears, or perhaps especially with my larger ears, depending which way you would like to take it. It just fits right in here. The cable connector right here matches perfectly so that way it goes around my ear. I have been able to lay comfortably in this and sleep with it on my side because it is so flush with my ear. Now granted that could be because I have do have larger ears 
but I can imagine, as, unless you have super, super tiny ears, I don't think you're going to have any issues with these in terms of comfort. They are so comfortable to wear. And with all the ear tips that RHA provides, I strongly doubt you won't find that perfect ear tip to match you as well. Me personally, I always go for and I always swear by the Comply Memory Foam. Please sponsor me, Comply. I could use more of your tips. I love you guys. Anywho, I digress. Now, isolation with these is fantastic. I couldn't hardly hear nothing. So, couldn't really wear them at work. Or if I did, I did, I had to be super, super low volume so I could hear if I got a call or not. But just they are, like I said, comfortable to listen to. I'm rambling on at this point, but I have zip complaints about the comfort. They, they are super nice to wear. RJ did a fantastic job in the craftsmanship and quality of this. And I don't know if you can see how thin it is. But as at least compared to I says my finger, it's very, very thin, so you should have no issues with it being in your ears at all either. Now, moving on to the sound quality. So how do the RHA's flagship CL2 product sound? Now, when I first put it on, the most immediate thing I noticed was these are a very bright or treble oriented IM. They are definitely treble focused. So, if you are treble sensitive, and please bear with us, don't just write this product off just yet. Please wait until the end of the review. But if you are super treble sensitive, you may want to be careful of these. But like I said, I have a caveat to that later on. So, I was really worried when I tried this. I was like, mm, definitely not my cup of tea as far as sound goes. Because uh, the first song I listened to was some rock, uh, some metal. I don't quite know the songs off the top of my hand, but it's just my traditional, like, my mix playlist. I hit the play button on it. And then I just kind of get a generalized idea of what they specialize in. So I was like, mm, let's see what they have to go for, but they're not going to be my cup of tea and sound. That was until I heard them with classical music, more specifically horned instruments. They sound so beautiful with brass instruments. Uh, it, it's just so... That, I mean, I've... To my memory and off the top of my head, I cannot think of a better product, not IM, not headphone, product that sounded better to horned instruments or brass instruments, whatever you want to call them, than the CL2s. They just resonated just so good. And there's quite a few songs, not quite a few, but there's a few songs that really stuck out to me that of course I linked in my written review, which is linked down below in the description. I strongly encourage you to check them out. But classical music just really shines on those, but I will, I will touch on that more in the treble section next. Now, soundstage. They are a traditional, I will say, soundstage for a IM. They're not super small, nor is it very broadened out. Now, it is at this point where I will uh, go ahead and put in there is a difference in sound quality when you are hardwired and then when you utilize the wireless headband. When it's hardwired, the sound is gonna be my default reference for my review. So if I'm speaking, it is of the pretense it is wired. If there is a notable difference in sound quality between going to wired and the wireless, I will spotlight that. So please keep that in mind. Now, going back to the sound stage. Once you have this in wireless mode, so you're using the headband, the soundstage goes right around here and it just really closes in. It doesn't get claustrophobic or anything, but it really narrows down. Additionally, the treble drops a notable bit and the bass is increased a notable bit. The imaging, if you will close your eyes and listen to the music, it will about transport you there. You don't really have a choice in that matter if you're listening to classical, again, stressed to horned instruments it'll force your eyes closed because it is so enveloping and it is yes it is a brighter more analytical sound but with classical music or like I said the horns you are you are there you it's something I can't really put together but just the resonance off the horns no matter if it's trumpets to euphoniums to uh, flutes I know flutes is a woodwind but bear with me um, you get the idea. There's just something I strongly encourage you. If you have the possibility to try and experience, please listen to those with a horned instrument. And I'll, of course, leave a couple of songs, at least for me, really spotlighted that. Moving on to the more individual aspects, so hopefully I can 
better describe what I'm trying to explain. But starting with the treble, starting up top and working my way down. The treble is, if I didn't emphasize that enough earlier, the treble is just beautiful. It is so engaging to listen to. And yes, it is treble focused, but not at one point at any time did this become piercing. Did this become unpleasant? Did it become fatiguing? Or any of that negative connotation or denotation you could, I, I, at least I could put into words, no matter if I was listening to super piercing, high-pitched music, or just general classical, or even rock, and I'll touch on that later as well. The roll-off, yes, goes very high, but it's a nice, subtle roll-off that right before he gets to be a piercing level, we're still comfortable, but right before it gets to that mm, level, it just rolls itself off very very well tuned it, from symbols to it, whatever you want to have just the finite details in the background really just do not escape the CL2s I, I just I have no I have no issues or complaints with the treble on the CL2s they are just beautiful beautiful uh, Tonalities. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but they just did a daggone well job. Now, moving down to the mids. The mids is what the what I'm personally mainly focused on. Uh, that is where the vocals are. That's where the soul of the artist. That's where they're. If you're if you're truly paying attention to music and you're truly listening, not hearing as background, but truly listening, the mids is where you're going to hear the vocals. Where they're going to hear the artist's emotion. That's where they're going to try and reach out to you. So for me personally. That's the area I most focus on. Now with the CL2s, as I mentioned, they're a brighter earphone. They're very analytical. But the mids, though yes, to disc claim, they are the tonality of the artist you're listening to is going to very slightly. Please, I even put it in bold and in capital letters on my review. It's slightly, but it is notable. Uh, shifted more towards the upper like it, it, they sound a little bit more higher pitched than they traditionally sound on a reference or a flat product if you will it's, it's a notable change but it's very very slight i digress but the they are so true sounding especially of the female variety males are good as well and i've linked several males michael buble's uh feeling good RHA, if you by chance grace me with watching this video and at least listening to me, if I can encourage you to have a song to put on demo to show off the capabilities of this CL2 product, please use Michael Buble's Feeling Good. I Of all the songs I heard, I listened to that one song three times just in writing this review because it came back up on my playlist and it is just every note on that song resonates about as good as I've ever seen on a product, or ever heard on a product, pardon me. But, going, getting back on track, I'm digressing a lot, but mids just have such a nice, realistic sounding body to them. It don't matter if they're snapping their fingers in the song, you hear all that and you get that flesh sound. And it's, and despite not being a warm I am or warm product, because it is not, it still doesn't lose that and it sounds very true minus that slight elevation in tonality that's it and again just like the treble and i wish i could showcase more but my gosh the mids are good oh of the mids are very good of the the mid mid to upper mids once you go into the lower echelons of the mid range which i guess that would technically be like a guitar uh cellos of that sort that's where I think the CL2's tuning has not quite specialized in, as in it could be a different product could probably specialize in that given area better than what the CL2's do. Not that it's bad, just that I think it's more geared towards classical, like horn, the treble side of the genre. But with that, other than that being said, Daggone, I love these mids. The vocals are just so nice to listen to. Coming to the bass. And as I said earlier, these are a very treble-oriented IM. Now, with planners, 
Planners are known on form wide as having speed, control, and quality in their base. Some of them are very punchy. A lot of planner magnetics are known for being warm or even dark sounding. However, the CL2 is not one of those. Though, and there's been, I think I listed two, I know I listed at least two, maybe three songs that really showcased, that's what I use to test bass on headphones or products or speakers, whatever it is. But though you do occasionally get those sub bass and you get those rumblies you want to feel in the music, you can get those in the CL2. It's not deep, but it is present. Of course, uh, they're linked in the description below the songs I utilize and I'm referencing. But in terms of, you know, if you listen to rock or metal or insert something that has a heavier bass emphasis, you're not going to get quite the enjoyment I think you're looking for or you're wanting. And not, for me personally, though, not one time when I have these because I really enjoy like Five Finger Death Punch or otherwise or a similar bands to that. It just didn't have with that the bass light sound just didn't have that fullness that that type of genre specializes in as it's more bass oriented versus treble. So the bass is not bad because it does. Dear goodness it does have the quality and that speed and the attack and the minimal decay that planners are known for. They keep all of that. It's just not a heavy impact uh, full uh, bass. There's not a lot of quantity in the bass, I guess, if, if that can help me summarize what it is. So that is actually it for my review of the flagship RHA CL2. My final thoughts on it is that in terms of a classical music horn, more specifically the horned brass woodwind instruments, good luck finding a better sounding product. Yes, this is $900, but in my personal opinion, it has earned that. RHA has done a truly fantastic job with the CL2s. These little boogers right here the performance that comes from them and the planner magnetic driver that's inside is something that my mere words and however long this video is going to end up being can showcase but you really need to experience that but for a comfortable I am they are one of the most comfortable products I have worn they're right there with the Bayer Dynamics Zalentos and the even custom my Empire Ears Customs they are so comfortable to wear I worn like I said for several hours on end so, I mean, I, I really looked and I tried to find a negative to say. And though I have personal, like I said, that personally, this isn't quite the product that swoons me over just because it's not my personal taste. But objectively speaking, I got nothing. I, RHA did a truly fantastic job in the entirety from the unboxing experience to the build quality, comfort, and sound for what they tuned it for. They did a fantastic job. But anyway, guys, if you have any questions or if there's anything I may have missed that you would like me to clarify more, please, please hit me up in the comments down below. I'll absolutely reply to each and every one of you. I do enjoy hearing from you. Um, as you can see, I got a, I'm got trying out a new setup. Hopefully, it looks a little bit better. I'm looking at myself on the uh, uh, screen thing and I'm not sure if I can fix myself I look probably red or shiny but it's a learning process as you've been with me for I guess four years now I'm getting a little bit better but anyway guys as always my name is Army Fire Dog it has truly truly been a pleasure but most importantly and please I ask of you my friends stay safe